Welcome to Real America on C-SPAN 3's American History TV. Forty years ago, in the wake of Watergate, the United States Senate created a special committee to look into the activities of U.S. intelligence services. The committee had a long official title. It was the Senate Select Committee to Study Governmental Operations with Respect to Intelligence Activities. And it quickly took on the nickname of its chairman, Frank Church, and it was best known to history as the Church Committee. Well, the committee met for 16 months. It reviewed more than 10,000 documents. It called 800 witnesses before the committee and its staff. Its legacy includes the creation of the Senate Permanent uh, Select Intelligence Committee, providing ongoing oversight of the intelligence agencies, and the creation of the Foreign Inter Intelligence Surveillance Act of 1978, which we know as FISA. The Church Committee's public hearings were held in the historic Senate Caucus Room, seen at the Watergate hearings only two years earlier. Next, we visit the caucus room to meet Kate Scott, associate historian of the Senate, who explains how and why the Church Committee came about and sets the stage for a September 16, 1975 hearing with CIA Director William Colby. The Church Committee was created in January of 1975 by the Senate um, in response to a series of revelations and allegations about domestic intelligence abuses in the United States. And the Senate created this committee by an overwhelming bipartisan majority, a vote of 82 to 4, um, to establish a committee that would examine just the, this specific issue of intelligence abuses and maybe how they were violating constitutional protections. Um, the Church Committee, to understand the, the context of the Church Committee, you have to go back to 1970. That was really the first big revelation of domestic intelligence abuses. Um, a whistleblower, a former Army counterintelligence um, captain, um, provided details in 1970 in a published account that was published by the Washington Monthly of a nationwide Army domestic intelligence program. Members of Congress didn't know anything about it. It had been secret for running for about a decade, and it, the, the whole purpose was to monitor political dissent in the United States, those who voiced um, opposition to do, the U.S. domestic and foreign policies. So Senator Sam Irvin of North Carolina chaired a committee to look into those um, allegations in 1971. And then two years after that, um, Sam Irvin again chaired another committee, the, the Senate Watergate Committee, to investigate allegations of impropriety during the 1972 presidential campaign. And over the course of that investigation, there were uh, new allegations made about the political uses of the FBI and CIA um, during that campaign. And then finally, in December of 1974, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Seymour Hirsch published um, a front page above the fold article in the New York Times alleging that the CIA had developed a domestic surveillance program which would have been in complete violation of its, um, of its charter. It was to have no domestic intelligence applications. And that allegation came about a month after the midterm elections of 1974, when a large group of so-called Watergate babies were elected um, to Congress. And they, many of them had run on a campaign pledge to clean up um, the executive branch and to, the, to, to come into Congress to provide better oversight of the executive branch. So something like the abuses that were revealed during the Watergate investigation couldn't happen again. So you have a large class of Watergate babies coming in saying we need to change the way that the government's operating. And then you have another revelation, the third one now, to say that there are some intelligence abuses out there and Congress doesn't seem to know much about them. And so in January of 1975, with the, um, the swearing in of these, new, shortly after the swearing in of this new class, the Senate agrees to create this new special committee. Um, Senator Frank Church is the chairman, that's why we call it the Church Committee. Um, he was at that time an 18 year member. He had served on the Foreign Relations Committee for 18 years. He was, he was a Senate veteran. Um, he had been a prominent outspoken critic of the Vietnam War. He was um, 
deeply involved in issues related to U.S. Um, the use of um, intelligence abroad. He was himself a former um, intelligence officer during World War II. He had served as an intelligence officer. So while he had a deep respect for the nature of intelligence gathering and the usefulness of the intelligence community, he was also skeptical about its applications, particularly um, domestic applications. The vice chairman of that committee um, was a John Tower of Texas. He was uh, a, f a fiery member of the Republican Party. He was a 10-year member of the Armed Services Committee, knew a lot about U.S. intelligence operations, um, and was a little bit skeptical, a little bit concerned about um, how, how the Senate could investigate these sensitive national security issues without revealing national security secrets. So he later boasted that he was put on the committee to make sure that this didn't become a sort of media <laughs> extravagant, this that didn't become a sensational event, um, and in some ways to protect the intelligence agencies. Um, that's really the, the, the origins of the Church Committee. We have been victimized by excessive secrecy, not only with respect to the failure of the Congress in the past to exercise proper surveillance over intelligence activities, uh, but also uh, excessive secrecy has created this kind of mischief within the executive branch. Here we have a case where the very methods of secrecy uh, concealed for five years an act of insubordination within the CIA uh, that came to light only by the happenstance that Mr. Colby, the present director, asked the agency if they please wouldn't tell him what's been going on that's wrong. 